What's going on Falcons fans? Logan here. Welcome back to Rise Up Rundown and if you're new here, welcome. So the 2019 season is actually getting really close and boy do I feel so good about how our defense is going to perform. I thought I'd make a list of five players on the Falcons defense that I think opposing offenses need to watch out for and here's the list. So if you haven't watched my video on why I think the Falcons defense could be a top five this upcoming year, go ahead and watch that. But in this video, I'm gonna make a list of five players on defense that opposing offenses should watch out for, and it all starts out with Tack McKinley. Now, most people view this guy as a bust, and though he maybe does need to improve his game a little more, guys, he actually proves he can get to the quarterback. He had six sacks his rookie year, and then seven sacks last year. Hmm, how many will he get this year? And he's one of the players that have caught Dan Quinn's eyes during minicamp. That's good news. It sounds like he's been impressive over the summer. I believe in Tack, and I loved his story once he told us that on draft night 2017. He'll get things straight, and it sounds like from what Dan Quinn has been saying recently, he's already on the right track. Up next is Grady Jarrett. Now this player statistically has always gotten better every year. He really did not have many sacks before last year, but last year he did wind up having six. And yes, I know some of that was just against the Cardinals, but impressive nonetheless. But also, did you know that last year he was the fifth highest graded defensive lineman according to Pro Football Focus? And with all of those injuries we had last year, he was the highest graded defensive player on our roster? I think when everyone's healthy, he's our third best defensive player behind Debo and Keanu Neal. Jarrett always proves he's getting better every single year. Now he didn't exactly get a huge contra extension, but I think that's a good thing. That obviously will fire him up to prove to the team, hey, I'm worth more than just a franchise tag, I'll go out and prove it. There's rumors that he might get a bigger contra extension before the season starts, so I don't know what to say about that, I mean I hope it happens. Oh, and did I forget to mention that I think he is the leader of our team? He's definitely vocal, and it seems like every time he makes a big play, the team gets hyped up. But overall, with him earning respect from his teammates to help him out, and him proving he gets better every single year, and him definitely wanting to go out there and prove he's more than just a franchise tag, watch out for Grady Jarrett. The next player is DeMonte KZ. I mean, this one almost seems obvious. He wasn't even supposed to start last year, but he did and was tied for most interceptions in the league. And he also is a very physical player. He is not afraid to hit. Well, now that Brian Poole is gone, KZ is rumored and I think will play nickel cornerback. He's got to be excited to play a new starting role. I remember he actually was kind of disappointed he wasn't getting much playing time his rookie year and wanted to prove himself and he did do just that when he started. I think he'll want to step up as a leader now that he's getting a much bigger role than he was supposed to. No matter what position he play, whether it's nickel corner, strong safety, free safety, whatever, I actually think KZ would work with any of those. He can cover and he can tackle. This guy can really just do it all. Let's hope he has an even better season than last year. Up next is Tyler Davidson. Wow, another defensive lineman. You think maybe I'm high on us having one of the best D-lines in the league? Now, he didn't exactly do a whole lot with the pass rush in New Orleans, but he sure did help the Saints become the fifth best run defense in the league. So he can stop the run for sure, but can he help put some pressure on the quarterback? Absolutely. If you were there for my talk with Lieutenant Dan from Unintentional Grounding, we talked about how Davison was actually someone that has impressed Dan Quinn so far in minicamp. And he'll be alongside Grady Jarrett, who is a leader, he'll obviously help Davison out. Davison is now with, in my opinion, a much better defensive coordinator in Dan Quinn. There's a reason Quinn picked him up in free agency, and he's happy he made that move if he's impressed so far over the summer. With a new defensive coordinator and being alongside one of the best pass rushers to help him out, watch out for Tyler Davison. And before I get to number five, here's some honorable mentions, and they didn't make this list because I feel like these are players that either don't exactly have to prove anything, or they just don't really have anything new going on like Grady Jarrett with that Contra extension. But here's some honorable mentions, Deion Jones, Ricardo Allen, and Keanu Neal. But number five, 
Last but not least is Isaiah Oliver. This player is coming off a terrible rookie season, but he did kind of play nickel corner, which I guess is just not what he likes playing. Well, Robert Alford is gone, so Oliver will likely take his role now. This is where I think he steps up. In college, he was for sure one of the better corners, and he still has potential to be a lockdown corner in the NFL. He has long arms, he's quick, and he's shown us how great his coverage skills can be when he was in college. If he steps into the role that I think suits him more, will we see a huge improvement from Isaiah Oliver? I hope so. I think it'll happen. We just gotta hope Dan Quinn can coach him up a little, because last year, ugh, not his best year. But watch out for Isaiah Oliver as he's in a prove yourself type year. But those are five players on the Falcons defense that I truly do believe will see improve and imposing offenses maybe want to watch out for them. They will be a huge reason on why the Falcons defense could very well end up in the top five in 2019. But that's just what I think. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. But other than that, whether you agree or not, please make sure to smash that like button blow up the comment section, and definitely hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any weekly content. There's new episodes every Tuesday and Friday at 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern, and I'll see you guys this Friday at 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern. Rise up.